Hi, my name is Eric Minnick with Urban Code. What I want to talk about today is an example where one of our customers came to us and had a really complicated workflow that they wanted to model. And we're going to look at how you do that in Antil Pro. So if we look at the workflow they came to us with, they sketched it out on paper. And you see when it starts, they do some setup work, they, they choose build numbers, they set up some things with source control, etc. And then it starts branching out a lot. Over on the left, they have a sub-build where they uh, build some of the artifacts, which they then package up in two different ways, so a QA package and a labeled package. At the same time they're doing that, they've got all of these builds going on. And these builds are all pretty much the same process, but there's some variance. So there's a couple of different platforms like Linux and Solaris. Um, there are also some build variants. I've just marked these down as build type 1 and 2. This could be a release versus a debug. They had some different uh, combinations. They've got some archive work that happens after, and then everything feeds into a cleanup process at the end. Then the trick was, you know, what if we know how to do all of these individual things? What if we know how to do a build? What if we know how to create the artifacts? What if we know how to do setup? How do we bring this into Antel in a meaningful way? And that's what we're going to look at today. So if I come into Antel, I've built out all of my jobs um, so that this is saying I know how to do the QA package, I know how to build one configuration, etc. And all of that's embedded in Antel already. We're just going to look at how to bring this into a big workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and create a workflow and uh, go ahead and then do the design. So we'll go ahead and do some of the base setup work. Okay, and the, the real modeling here is going to happen under the definition tab. So I'm going to do an embedded definition. This isn't coming from outside. And what we have in Antil is we basically have a start and a stop, which is going to represent kind of this workflow area and down below cleanup. Uh, but it looks like when we start, we're going to start with setup. And so we'll add that one in first. And so now we have setup added. And then what we've got after that is uh, the create artifacts. So we'll add in create artifacts. Create artifacts. And then in parallel with the create artifacts, we have the build job. So we'll add a job in parallel. So now we've got those two things happening, and that's good. But actually, you have this whole block in parallel with the build. Um, so we'll add the QA and label jobs. So we'll insert a job after the create, and that'll keep it in its own place. We'll choose the QA first. And in parallel with the QA, we have the label. Excellent. So that's looking good. Um, looks like we're just missing archive to come after a build and cleanup. So we'll add those two in. Oops, helps if I click correctly. And then we have cleanup. So we'll say cleanup happens before you stop. Okay, so we're making some pretty good progress. We have um, a good workflow here. It looks pretty similar to what we uh, drew out, which is really the goal. The big thing that we're missing right now is that bit of complication that, that the customer had and that we've got a whole bunch of variants of this build job. Um, you know, some customers might have four, some are going to have 30. Um, but really what we've got is the same job run many different ways um, with different parameters going in. So let's go ahead and model that. What we do in Antil is we say, this job gets iterated. So we do it repeatedly. And you'll put in the number of combinations you have. I think 10 is a good example. So we'll choose that. We'll say, yes, we want these to run in parallel. And uh, we'll say there's an unlimited number that can run in parallel. Great. So now we've got 10 different build jobs, but they're all the same. 
So we want to modify this so that we pass in different parameters on different jobs. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go and set iteration properties. And this one might be the Linux uh, type 1 build. So we might say platform equals Linux. Build type equals uh, 1. And this will be passed into our build. We'll use this on the command line or use it to determine what steps we run. Uh, but this will inform the build to happen uh, in the Linux build one way. Then we can keep on going. So we'll say Linux type 2. And when I do this, I'll often just copy that. And then maybe type 3 is our first Solaris one. And then what I would do is I'd go down through all 10, uh, put in the appropriate parameters. Once I've put in the parameters, I can skip between them and I can look at all the details and I can say, you know, the name here should have been type 2 um, and work with that. So that's how I'm going to say, uh, put in the variation between each build. So we'll save that, cancel out. And now what I really have is something that looks a lot like my picture. So I set up, off on the left I create artifacts and a couple of packages. On the right I do a whole bunch of different builds that are a variation. Um, I do some archive and then I clean up. That's pretty much what uh, the drawing was. And so I would encourage you to take the same approach. I would start with a piece of paper. I would draw out what you want. I would model out your jobs, and then I would just build them into Antil using the, the workflow definition builder. So I hope that helps uh, explain how you do complex workflows in Antil Pro. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you.